morning and welcome on this glorious morning as we gather for worship here at Knox Presbyterian Church in Walkerton. I welcome those of you who are here this morning on this holiday weekend and those who are joining us online. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning to gather here. Jane has brought her special gift with her. Her giggles. So good to hear those giggles every Sunday morning. Yeah. Jane, yes. Thank you. You gift us. Uh, first of all, in the announcements, there are several announcements <coughs> on the um, online. Well, you may have a paper sheet as well and online as well. Um, there's a birthday card for Jim Armstrong, a member of Knox here, who has relocated and is living now in. Clinton, yes. Um, his 90th birthday is coming up, so if you'd like to sign the birthday card that's out there, if you haven't already done so, we invite you to do that and send our greetings on the occasion of his 90th birthday. Um, the other announcements are, as you'll find them online or on your paper sheet, another announcement that is really exciting for us to share with you this morning is that over the past number of months, the search committee has been hard at work in our seeking of a new minister to serve here as minister of word and sacrament here at Knox Church. And after many months of hard work, we believe that we have found the candidate who will best serve Knox um, in time. And so we announced today that we took our recommendation from the search committee to the session um, this past week. And the session has extended uh, an invitation for this candidate to come and preach for a call on July the 24th. Circle your calendars now. July the 24th. We need as many of you here to be part and to share in that day, part of that procedure of discerning that this indeed is the minister we want here at Knox. <clears throat> there will be a congregational meeting following worship that day and it will be at that moment that you have an opportunity to vote on the calling of this minister. We will be making this announcement over the next couple of weeks but July the 24th is the Sunday that we are particularly um, encouraging all to be here and present. We know that some of you are not comfortable because of COVID or other reasons or able to be here and so we would encourage you to watch the service online on July 24th and if you're able to join by Zoom um, for the congregational meeting you will also be able to vote in the uh, procedure that you know the, calling of a minister, you will add your vote as well as, as everyone who is present physically here. Each week there will be more information about uh, the weekend of July 24th. The search committee will be meeting this coming Tuesday evening to make further plans about uh, that particular weekend and we'll be wanting to pass along that information to the congregation. I want to explain about the reason why um, the name of the candidate is not announced at this time. We are on social media and in order to provide a, a certain degree of privacy that name will not be shared with with everyone online or yes online but those of you who receive the information um, in messages in announcements you will get that information at this point. You will be able to know who this person is and a little bit about who he is. Um, so, don't worry, you're going to know who our candidate is and lots more about him as we go forward in these weeks. And I want to say a special thanks to our wonderful search committee who have worked so hard over the past number of months. We began um, last July when I first uh, arrived here at Knox to uh, put together the profile for the congregation and following that we continued to work um, throughout the following months 
to come to where we are today <coughs> by having a candidate to present to the congregation. It's very exciting for us all, but I want to thank all of the members of the search committee for their diligence, their hard work, their attendance at meetings, their reading of many uh, profiles, and, um, and their discernment skills. It, it was, it's been a good uh, experience for us all. I don't have any other announcements for this morning. Everybody's okay with that? Oh. I was just downstairs and there is perking. So looking forward to having a chat with you all downstairs following worship this morning. <coughs> and there is Sunday school today or not? No Sunday school today. Okay. So you may have picked up some bags at the back. Hopefully some activity bags for the children are at the back. You can use those. It's time for me to light the Christ candle. On this bright sunny day, we think, we don't need a light. We've got lots of sunlight. But there is another light. A light that is invisible, except it is visible. That light is what guides us to do and say the things that we do. It's the light of Christ. It's the light that enables us to be God's people. So I like the Christ candle now to remind us that that light is also with us, even on this sunny, sunny, bright sunny day like we have today. And perhaps more importantly, this light also is with us throughout the days when there's shadows or clouds, dark, it helps us to find out our way. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in our call to worship. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. We will sing to the glory of God with resounding praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. God has turned our morning into dancing and clothed us with joy. Let all the earth worship God and sing praises to God's holy name. O Lord, our God, we will give thanks to you forever. Come, let us worship God. Let us worship God together as we join together in our opening hymn of praise, number 814, Morning Has Broken. Before God in a time of prayer. Okay. <clears throat> God.
God of majesty and God of mercy, in creation you gave us all that we need to live and all that we can cherish. You came to us in Jesus Christ to show us the face of your love. You walk into our lives to meet us in the midst of joy and pain. Through the Holy Spirit, you speak words of wisdom to help us find our way. God, in our midst, speak to us today in this time of worship. Speak the words we need to hear so that we know you still walk with us in Jesus Christ. For we honor you, source, savior, and spirit of life, one God, now and forever. Loving God, you send us into the world as ambassadors of your love and your peace. Yet too often we create discord and division. We serve our own interests first, ignoring those in need. We value our understanding of the world you love, and we fail to listen to the stories of others. Forgive us for such self-centeredness. Help us to be more faithful disciples of Jesus, eager to serve, willing to listen, glad to be of service. In his name, amen. amen. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul declared that from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away and everything has become new. So thanks be to God that by God's mercy we can all make a new start. Let us join together as we share the peace of Christ. Here we go again. Here we go. Peace before us. Peace, peace behind us. Peace, peace under our feet. feet. Peace within us. Peace over us. Peace over us. <laughs> Let all around us be peace. The peace, peace of Christ, Christ with you. you. And with yeah. Yeah. And peace. Christ peace. Christ peace. Peace be with you. And oh. Christ peace. Have you said Dale? Yeah. I can count. We're going to do it downstairs. We're going to come this day. Peace be with you. I'm very thankful for our music team this morning. The choir are having a break for a few weeks, and our music team will be uh, helping us in the music ministry. So we thank you, and we invite you to share your gift of music.
supply in various churches in the United Church I've come to love that one it's in one of their song books and I looked at it and considered it for one of our hymns today but then I remembered you folks wouldn't know it but Jane over there she knows it and she chose it for our music team to use and that's just a wonderful coincidence that's happened more than one occasion and I sure appreciate it how our messages go back and forth, even without words. Thank you so much. A wonderful piece. And now that you've heard it once, maybe there will be another opportunity for you to sing it because it's a wonderful, wonderful song. And we need to be able to share one another's music and ways of worship through the, the faith community. So that's a gift from the United Church. For sure. Thanks very much. Dave, thank you for your singing. Our family faith time this morning um, takes me um, to a, a number of places. Last Saturday evening, our um, Syrian family, um, the sponsorship team in, in Wingham, we uh, invited them to come and to be with uh, members of the sponsorship team that were able to be there on Saturday evening we had a potluck and we, we celebrated their five years of being in Canada. Some of those years have been really hard and difficult for them. Um, we had a wonderful time there where uh, some of the children's friends that they had got to meet in the community who also joined us so they were kicking the soccer ball around of course and playing with um, some various water toys including water guns and some of us were getting sprayed with water and bubbles and all kinds of things. We all had a wonderful time. But I have to tell you that for the children, the very best time was the party after the party. Because you see, we weren't too far from the wonderful splash pad and all of the wonderful water features that that splash pad has. And so for an hour following um, the potluck, uh, the four children, the youngest not even two years old, we're running through the water, fully clothed, with their shoes on, having a wonderful time for an hour of water play. And of course, sharing some of that water with those adults who remain to watch the party after the party. The water party was wonderful. And I couldn't help, you know, feeling so joyful and happy for them because it was a, a really, really happy time for them. So. I wondered if any of you have you know, run through the splash pad lately. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how old you are, <laughs> running through a splash pad is fun. Or even if you just stand on the edge and let the children splash you, it's fun. Or, or, or maybe you've accidentally been sprayed by the garden hose, or caught in a rainstorm, and gotten wet. Those things are all marvelous, and it all is about water. How about, do you have memories of splashing through a mud puddle? Do you remember going out when you were young, in the rain? Maybe a, a, a warm summer rain, and splashing in the water that's accumulated? Fun. The water is a wonderful gift. I remember my golden retrievers through the years, getting into the pool, the swimming pool that I would have in the backyard for the children or for the dog. Getting wet, 
And what do they do afterwards? They share that wetness, don't they? <laughs> it's wonderful. Sometimes we might not think so. We might get soaked by water. And sometimes we can be really surprised by water, right? Water, I want to tell you this morning, is a good symbol of God's, God's goodness to us all. It reminds us of God's goodness. Simple water. It's because of the <coughs> delight and the wonderful surprise that water brings to us. Just think for a moment all of the ways in which water is a blessing. What would we do without water? It is so, so important in our lives. It cools us on a very hot day. Isn't that right? It cools us. So that's why we like to get in the splash pad or go to the pool or have a shower. It cools us down on a hot day. It also quenches our thirst, right? When we're very thirsty, we can take a glass of water and that feels good. And it soothes and cleanses us when we've been doing something that's made us really hot and dirty and we need to get clean. All of those things are the gifts of water. Water is a gift and a blessing from God. And, well, I think water has a way of reminding us of God. The water of baptism, our baptismal font is back behind me. That's where we're reminded of God's gift of water. Creation starts in water. We need to take care of water, make sure that we have enough water for all the world. Clean water, drinkable water. But we need to remember that God is a gift. Water is a gift. And God has given us this wonderful gift to enjoy and to sustain all of life. So this morning I remind us all of God's wonderful gift of water. So the next time you take a glass of water, remember, gift of God. The next time you take a shower, gift of God. And the next time you're in the splash pad too, gift of God. <laughs> Check out the splash pad near you. Our responsive reading this morning. No, I wasn't in the splash pad myself, but I got a little bit wet from it. Let us read responsively uh, this portion of Psalm uh, 6, verses 1 to 9. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am faint. Heal me, Lord, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in deep anguish. How long, Lord? How long? Turn, Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. Among the dead, no one proclaims your name. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from my groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. A reading from the prophet of Isaiah. Nice Bible. The prophet Isaiah, really. Um, reading in chapter 66, verses 10 to 14. And yes, this is close to the end of the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Hear the word of God. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. 
Your body shall flourish like the grass, and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants, and his indignation is against his enemies. Amen. Amen. And then from Paul's letter to the Galatians, Again. we hear these words. <coughs> Not a Bible. <coughs> Reading in chapter 6, verses uh, 1 to 16. My friends, Paul says, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. For if, if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So, let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, Whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the fa family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is for those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation. Well, that's everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the God, the Israel of God. Amen. And now from the Gospel of Luke, a reading um, in two portions, in chapter 10, verses 1 to 11, and then again from 16 to 20. In this passage, Jesus is getting ready to send out the 70 out into the world where they may, as lambs, encounter wolves in their work. Jesus has words of caution, words of encouragement for them and for us. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest and go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, 
Go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. And continuing at verse 16, whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Thanks be to God for this reading of God's word. Amen. Amen. Let us turn now to sing a hymn, 741, Like a Mighty River Flowing. I remember visiting some place in Cape Breton Island. Um, there are lots of beautiful places that look like that in Cape Breton Island. I can't wait to get back there sometimes. If you've never been, you must go to Cape Breton Island. That's for sure. You will find the perfect piece of God there. All of the scriptures today reminded me that I could see there was a theme flowing through all of the, the scriptures, and it had to do with this piece of God. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. One that, you know, we cannot comprehend fully in our human hearts and minds. It's a peace that is pervasive. It's a peace that, it, well, is God. And we work towards it. From time to time, we get a glimpse of it. And someday, we will know it fully, that full peace of God. So today, our focus is on a peace that makes our hearts rejoice. 
a peace that makes us really feel our hearts smiling and jumping within us. A peace that brings us together. It doesn't have anything to do with war or guns, violence, not that kind of peacefulness, although we need that kind of peacefulness too. This is another kind of peace that brings us something whole and beautiful that God intended in creation. Our relationship with one another and with our God. Peace be with you all this day. For thus says the Lord, I will extol and extend peace to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass. There's a certain way you hold a child in your arms. A certain way you shift your weight from, from one foot to the other. A certain angle at which you can position your hip just right. You might sway slowly side to side or, or bounce if the child needs a little settling. This can feel like the most natural thing to do. To pick up a child and rest them on the little perch your body so easily create. You don't have to think about it really, for your body knows instinctively what to do when you pick up a little child. There's a certain way a child will just collapse into your body, a certain way that their weight can just sink upon you, and on a hot day that's sometimes more than you want. Holding a child is a, a beautiful and wonderful thing. So utterly do they sink into your chest when they lean back. There's a certain way they, their feet dangle, a way that they can squirm until they find just the right spot. Holding a child on your hip or in the crook of your arm or on your lap to give love and comfort, to receive love and comfort in return is as basic a human need as sleeping or eating. There's a certain moment Sometimes a moment when you're holding a child and you and the child are in perfect sync. Your limbs relaxed. Your breathing even matches theirs. And in that moment, there's a peace. Such a deep, deep, mysterious peace. Peace like a river. To quote the prophet Isaiah in this morning's reading from the Hebrew scriptures, a river full to almost overflowing, meandering slowly past the bank. And while our translation of this verse uses the phrase prosperity, like a river, the word in Hebrew is shalom, peace. This word in Hebrew is not a peace without malice. It's not a peace that, it is rather a peace that is the wholeness that comes through a proper relationship with God. Isaiah's words were for people who were so desperately in need of this peace. They were people driven from their home, from Jerusalem in 587 before the Common Era, when the Babylonians invaded and destroyed their city. The people who spent decades, generations in exile, and now when these words are written, they're going home, a home they might not recognize a home changed and ravaged by years of foreign occupation. But like a child returning to their mother, they are returning to their God who will be there to comfort them and to offer them this shalom, this peace. In the Gospel reading this morning, Jesus also speaks of peace as he commissions the 70 to go out as lambs amidst wolves. Jesus tells these disciples to carry nothing with them, to greet those they encounter with the words, peace to this house. They are not offering a simple peace. Instead, like the Hebrew shalom, 
This piece is about wholeness. It's about relationship with God. Perhaps we've lost that sense of the word peace. The German theologian Dorothy Soleil in her, in her wonderful book called Windows of Vulnerability writes that this biblical concept of peace has, in the current world order, been absorbed and become synonymous with security. We've used the word peace in ways that aren't necessarily the biblical understanding. These days we look to a person with guns and ammunition to provide us with peace. This kind of thinking leads to walls and tanks and guns such as we witness right now in Ukraine. This kind of thinking sees those fleeing the violent insecurity of a home they once knew and now seeking security in other countries. This kind of thinking which prioritizes security over wholeness and love. A love that, well, picks them up, gently holding them and welcoming them in welcoming arms. But the kind of peace we find in Christ, the kind of peace we hear of in today's gospel is found in letting go of those things that the world tells us lead to security like armies and guns and walls and money and things and achievements. And instead, opening our arms wide and embracing those in need of comfort, feeding those who are hungry, holding the hands of the sick and the dying. Those are the ways to this shalom, to this peace that God wishes for us. Jesus calls us to a kingdom of peace, a peace which asks us, all of us, to leave the security of our comfortable places, our homes, our cars, and maybe, yes, our pews as well, and venture out into the world carrying nothing, nothing but the best news ever that in Christ Jesus, God has entered into this world. And in and with and through Christ, we too can participate in bringing peace to our much broken world. Taking part in the kingdom, in this kingdom peace that Jesus is talking about today, it also asks us not only to offer hospitality to those who come through our church doors, but also to accept the hospitality of others in the world, to stay with them for a while, to share the stories of our faith, and the way that the kingdom of God has come near to us. And that's not easy. It's not easy. It's scary for me. It's scary for all of us. It can feel just as Jesus describes, as if we are lambs being sent out into the midst of wolves. But in the upside kingdom of peace that Jesus proclaims. The Lamb carries the blessing of God with them. And that kingdom comes near everyone. All we encounter, even the wolves of the world. That does not mean that we will always feel secure or that we will always feel safe, but we will have the blessing of the peace of Christ with us. That peace, that shalom, is ours, it goes with us as we go out to live our daily lives. When I was first ordained to the ministry of word and sacrament, offering the benediction at the very end of worship was an especially important honor for me. It was a highlight. When I got to that moment, I always felt goosebumps. I still do. Still is a special, special time for me. But there's another moment in worship that I find especially wonderful, powerful. And it's when we celebrate communion, at the moment when the peace of Christ is extended. May the peace of Christ be with us all. To me, that's another highlight, a moment of blessing. And sometimes those words are the ones we read in Paul's letter to the Philippians. 
which offer the peace of God which passes all understanding to the community of believers to which he was writing it to us. He was wanting to reassure those people long ago that the peace of God which passes all understanding will be with them. It's the same for us. That peace which passes all understanding can be with us, is with us, as we live our daily lives. And while I love and am deeply grateful for the privilege to offer God's blessing, I think that we all should leave here blessing one another, blessing everyone we meet, reminding the world that the kingdom of God has come near. Isn't that the good news that we hold and share? That's the good news which our faith is based upon. So I wonder if today, and in the days ahead, every day, that we might offer a blessing to someone or to something. It can be very small. In her lovely book that was written about 10 years ago now, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor suggests starting with a simple stick you might see on, as you walk down the sidewalk. I meant to bring a stick in this morning with me, but visualize a simple stick. Just a little stick that's fallen off of a tree somewhere. And take a moment and recognize that you didn't make this stick. Imagine the stick's story. Did a bird once sit upon that stick? Did a flower bloom at its edges just a little while ago, perhaps? Wonder at the miracle of this piece of wood that once was an artery of a tree. And Barbara Brown Taylor suggests that you could whisper a blessing, something like this. Bless you, stick, for being you. Bless, blessed are you, O oh stick, for turning dirt and sun into wood. Blessed are you, Lord God, for using this stick to stop me in my tracks and look at you, a tiny stick. And then maybe after some practice, you might try a bird or a cat or a friend or the man that you encounter wandering aimlessly down the street, offering a blessing of Christ's peace, which is really just a recognition of the belatedness, the blessedness, rather, of all creation to the world. I must have had a spelling error and my computer changed the word blessed into belatedness. How different. <laughs> the blessing of creation. And in these blessings, we offer one another in the relationships we build, in the comfort we give and receive, the comfort like a mother might offer her child, picking her up, adjusting her on the side of her body and, and swaying side to side. There's a comfort that overflows from God. That is peace that shall make our hearts rejoice and our bones to flourish like the grass. That is a certain way that God holds us all in loving arms. Thanks be to God. Amen. No, that's fish. After? Okay. <laughs> Don't mean that. <laughs> the Apostle Paul urges us not to grow weary in doing what is right through our gifts to God. We participate in God's goodness at work in the world. So, take heart. Whatever you give, give with confidence that God will use our gifts for the good purposes of the gospel. Our time, our talent, and our treasures, God receives, blesses, and uses for good. Let us worship God now with our offering.
generous God, you have blessed our lives with gifts, both visible and invisible. We offer our gifts now in gratitude to build up your kingdom in the world. Bless all that we give to make a difference in the lives of others. And for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. that this is the Sunday closest to um, Canada Day and um, the anniversary of the finding of the graves of, unmarked graves of so many uh, children at residential schools. I want us in our prayers this morning to be remembering um, the work that we have on our way to reconciliation in this country as we uh, come to grips with our history and as we find ways to um, bring healing and wholeness and reconciliation to our various communities. Also in our prayers this morning, we remember um, the situation in uh, Ukraine and all the countries of the world who are coming to, together to help them on a journey that is still very painful and dark. Um, we continue to reach out in ways that we can to help them. I know that communities around here are already receiving those who have fled um, the violence in Ukraine. Uh, we have families from Ukraine uh, resettling in our midst, and we pray for them at this time and for all of the people of Ukraine. And that there would be an absence of war and violence in their country and that instead it would be replaced with the peace of God, the wholeness of God in time. We pray also for that. Let us come before God in prayer. Creator God, source of all life and each life, we come to you in prayer this day, grateful that your world is full of wonder, full of possibility, but also in desperate need of your reconciling love. We pray for the many different peoples of this world, divided as we are into many nations and clans and cultures and spiritual traditions. Help us understand those differences more fully and to honor the good things that bind us together despite our many differences. Bless both our diversity and our unity as those who belong to you. God of all the earth, teach us to live in love Loving God, source of truth and wisdom, in the world we are confronted by powers and authorities. Help us recognize their potential for both good and evil, and to act wisely and faithfully to discern whom to trust and when to act. When we see injustice or recognize falsehood, give us the courage to speak up in Christ's name. Open our eyes to our own weakness and bias, and speak to us through the example of Jesus our Lord. God of all the earth, teach us to live in love. Compassionate God, the world is filled with violence and hatred, costing so many innocent lives. We sometimes feel powerless to do anything about it. Today our hearts ache for those who live amid brutal conflicts, for those who have died through violence, and for those who suffer the many effects of trauma. We pray for those who have lost their homes through conflict and fled their countries just to survive. Open our hearts and our homes to welcome those who flee and protect those who stay amid conflict to offer care for those in need. God of all the earth, teach us to live in love all-knowing God, you see into our hearts and you know the heartaches we carry, each one of us. We pray for those living with, 
with illness and with pain. We pray for those who mourn the loss of someone or something dear. We pray for all those struggling with anxiety or despair in these challenging times. God of all the earth, teach us to live in love. Wise and welcoming God, give us the grace to love out our faith, to live out our faith among family and friends, with our acquaintances and with our strangers. Help us to trust your guidance in all situations as we pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us conclude our worship this morning as we sing um, hymn number 474. The love of God comes close. May we go now to seek justice for all God's children. Let us not grow weary of leading others to the kingdom. 
May we go to follow Jesus' example of gathering all into God's grace. Let us not grow weary of speaking of hope and peace. May we go to sow the Spirit's seeds of life and hope. And may the joy and the peace of God fill our hearts and our minds this day and always. Thank <laughs> you.